down that gun, Vienna. Put down the gun. Down there, I sell whiskey and cards. All you can buy up these stairs is a bullet in the head. Now, which do you want? Johnny Guitar is a 1954 masterpiece from director Nicholas Ray, based on a novel by Roy Chancellor. It's a remarkable work, not in the least because it sheds all pretense of concern with the lives of actual Old West denizens in favor of exploring the tropes and images of the Hollywood Western itself. There are no recognizably human characters, just representations of archetypes and familiar conflict set against a frontier we know only from films. That's a lot of man you're carrying those boots, stranger. You know, there's something about a tall man makes people sit up and take notice. Yes, sir. Just as the stars of old Hollywood loomed larger than life, their portrayals here are stylized to the point of inaccessibility in all but the most abstract terms. Sterling Hayden plays Johnny Guitar, a generic Western hero. The name is Johnny Guitar. The shootist, whose skill with his weapon elevates him to a kind of angel of death, a manifestation of frontier justice, such that he no longer has a place in the company of men. Faster on the draw than the quickest kid, tougher in a brawl than the meanest thug, he's more icon than man, the stuff of legend. But one of the unusual features of Johnny Guitar is that its hero is not the protagonist. The story revolves around Vienna, played by Joan Crawford, as a woman similarly outside of seemingly attainable humanity. Look at her, standing up there staring down on us like a somebody. Go get her! Drag her down! I've never done a thing to hurt any of you. Don't make me do it now. Today's filmmakers tend to think of a strong woman as one who can deliver a flying dropkick, but here Crawford demonstrates a strength that is rooted in the integrity of her pristine character, and her unfaltering determination to see her plans through. You're going to see a whole new town, right where you're standing. A town you don't own. The railroad sending in people by tens, twenties, hundreds, and thousands. You can't keep them all out. Strong in conviction and impeccable of character, she too is almost a mythic figure, admired by all the men in the story. That's for Vienna to decide. Vienna decided. That man's got to stop somewhere. This seems as good a spot as any. That's just about the most touching speech a woman ever listened to. The two are rendered not as people, but as idealized representations. He, the self-sufficient, capable loner, and she, the unapologetic entrepreneur. Ironically, any romantic connection between them seems impossible. They are no longer human. They are too abstracted to exist in the world of their fellows. Oh, it's a sad story. I listen good to sad stories. Five years ago, I loved a man. He wasn't good, he wasn't bad, but I loved him. I wanted to marry him, to work with him, to build something for the future. They should have lived happily ever after. They didn't. They broke up. He couldn't see himself being tied down to a home. Looks like the girl did a smart thing in getting rid of him. She was smart, all right. She learned not to love anybody again. Johnny wants to recover his humanity, to shed the veneer of the reputable gunman, so that he can be with Vienna again. He's taken up a guitar in place of his guns, and left behind the locally famous name of Johnny Logan. You haven't told me a thing I don't know. I haven't finished. Finish, but be brief. The posse feels safe because it's big. They only make a big target. I can ride around and pick off a few. The rest of them will lose their guts, turn tail, break up, and go home. I hired you for protection. I won't have any killing. Stuck between his persona and the man he wishes to be, Gun Crazy Johnny is unable to be the true hero Vienna seeks, a man of unsullied character who will defend her justly. You've got to kill. I don't know any other way. You are Gun Crazy. It'll never be any different. It was a mistake to send for you, Johnny. Seems I've lost some of my charm. All of it. Vienna has a former lover, now discarded not for his fault so much as because the two are not of a kind. The dancing kid harbors affection for Vienna and resentment for Johnny. Just as the protagonist is not Johnny, however, 
the principal villain of the piece is no rival of his. Mercedes McCambridge as Emma Small is the principal antagonist. Why do you hate him so? What did he ever do to you? Maybe you don't hate him. If you've got something to say, you'd better say it, Vienna. Let Emma say it. I wouldn't spit on him. Emma jealously guards her status as the most influential woman in town, and is envious of the regard in which the dancing kid holds Vienna. Coupled with his indifference to Emma, the fact that the kid's affection is not reciprocated by Vienna only enrages Emma all the more. It's one thing to be rejected in favor of a rival, quite another when the rival isn't even trying. You want the kid and you're so ashamed of it you want him dead. You want me dead too. Then maybe you can sleep nights. I won't sleep till I see both of you hanged. Emma doesn't hate Vienna for what she has done, but for who she is. And so it is a hatred of one woman for another who has done her no wrong that drives the conflict. I'm going to kill you. I know. If I don't kill you first. Cambridge's performance is striking, bold, and histrionic. It's over-the-top in its expressiveness, almost expressionistic. Like a silent film star, she strikes poses. It's in her performance that the film goes furthest in its indulgence of stylized presentation, preferring the arresting over the plausible. What are you going to do now? What do you say, Mr. McIvers? Hang them! No! No! <laughs> Let Mr. McIver say it. All right. I'm for it. Her too? True to her example, the character's posture in dramatic conflict, and the result is almost operatic. Her too. Why did you do it, Tom? It's the first time I ever felt important. Like most classic westerns, Johnny Guitar is a morality tale, but the level of conflict is epic in scale. It has been cited as the chief inspiration for Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in the West, and that film exemplifies the scope implied by its precursor. Similarly, the presentation of Johnny Guitar is in every respect elevated, from the bold colors to the careful composition of the visuals, including the blocking of characters, whose presence seemed justified mostly by the effect they have in the balancing of the image. The amorphous, funereal mob that clusters around Emma belies her surname and lends her substance, reminding us that envy may seem a trivial evil, but it can collect around itself enough animosity to pose a genuine threat. The posse shifts and moves like a cloud formed of her hate. The characters are larger than life, the story is life taken to extremes, and the result is high drama, the like of which rarely occurs either in fiction or reality. So what is the value in presenting such hyper-stylized dramatics? What is the audience to gain by watching characters and events so simplified and exaggerated as to be almost cartoonish? What relevance can a story like Johnny Guitar have? It's set in a West in which no native peoples reside, stripped of potential controversy and allowing us to focus on the simplicity of the morality story presented. It reduces the expanse of unsettled land to the state of a backdrop for a stage drama. Vienna's ambition is non-exploitive, as she offers equal shares to any who will partner with her. When the railroad comes through here, how much do you think this property will be worth? <laughs> What's Albuquerque worth? How would you like to share in it? I'll need all the help I can get. Thus freed of any quality for which she might be blamed by the audience, 
she joins Johnny as a heroic, mythic figure. Looks like a lot of towns I've been in. This town will be here next year. You can own part of it. Share and share alike with Frank, Tom, Eddie, and Sam. By stripping away the particulars of individual faults and presenting us with archetypes, a story like this becomes aspirational. We don't want to be the legendary gunman, nor the woman who personifies frontier spirit, but we want to be like them. We can learn from and admire them as representations of humanity in the ideal. As such, Johnny Guitar is to be enjoyed as a self-consciously fictional work. In experiencing the stylized reality of this intensified drama, we both learn to appreciate the value of our ideals and the reality of our humanity. Please note that you can now support this channel through Patreon with a link below. As always, thank you for watching. Please comment, share, like, and subscribe. Or shoot me. Never seen a woman who was more a man. She thinks like one, acts like one, and sometimes makes me feel like I'm not. <laughs>